one of the things that is so important to understand if you're a Christian when you start the first thing you've got to do is you've got to have a good grasp of biblical base for what we believe because you know the Word of God is our rock it's not some we, we've dreamed up some idea of what we want to stand on it's the Word of God and if you get your feet on the foundation of the Word of God and you live by that word then you will build something solid in your life what has happened is people have lost sight of any moral code any absolute truth and they're now in a sea of compromise and unfortunately many churches have uh, what can I say um, done despite to the gospel and so I want to take you back to the book and back to looking at what really we're fighting uh, what we are fighting is for the hearts and minds of men all we're going to tell them is hey this is the truth we're not fighting demons and spirits and things that go bang in the night it's people people with wrong ideas wrong attitudes wrong beliefs okay what happened to Sodom and Gomorrah what happened to it? It was destroyed utterly. They never found a trace of it. Now the reason it was destroyed was sodomy. Not gay, sodomy. Homosexual sodomy. Sodom and Gomorrah. In other words, Lot offered his daughters and they said, no, we want the men. Now, God destroyed it utterly off the face of the earth. You remember? Okay. Now, God hates that form of lifestyle. It's not anything to do with my choice. It's to do with God. It's amazing that he did not believe that the people of Sodom and Gomorrah were actually born that way and they couldn't help themselves he just destroyed it utterly burnt it out now that's God's opinion now you might not like it you might feel in your humanistic Christian attitude that that's wrong but he destroyed it utterly is that clear Amen. now is that in the book it's in Genesis chapter 19. Now we need to make it clear that what we are are Bible believers. <coughs> Leviticus 18. Leviticus 18 verse 22 says this, Thou shalt not l lie with mankind as with womankind. It is an abomination. Now that is it. God says, hey, Men, don't you ever live with a, lie with a man the same way you lie with a woman. It's an abomination. It's totally forbidden in Scripture. Plain, simple, clear. Now, if anyone asks you why you disagree with it, you say, this is what God says. Not my opinion. Not my idea. It's God's. And he's almighty. And you'll find in Leviticus 20 verse 13, If a man also lie with mankind, as he lieth with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. They shall surely be put to death, their blood shall be upon them. That's in Leviticus 20 verse 13. Now did God get it wrong? Hello? Is it in the book? You might not like it being in the book. You might feel that it shouldn't be in the book. But then we'll come to what you are a little later. Okay. Romans. Uh, Romans chapter 1. If you've got a good authorized version of the Bible, you'll find it. Romans chapter 1 verse 20 says this, for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world 
are clearly seen, having been understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead. Now, when were the things, the invisible things of him, from the creation of the world clearly seen? Do you know, one of the things that's under attack is creationism. If they can take away the idea that God created and it was merely something that evolved, then Adam and Eve don't exist, so sin didn't come in, original sin didn't come in, and therefore the whole of the gospel of one man atoning for sin, if sin didn't come by one, one man couldn't atone. So it takes away the whole foundation of Christianity. If you're one of these people that believes that nonsense of a period of time, it was six days, it could have been six seconds, it could have been six minutes. God happened to take six days. End of story. That's what the Bible teaches. Now, if you're one of those people who wants to argue, oh, well, it evolved, you're not a Christian, you're a heathen. Don't ever call yourself a Christian. If you can't believe in Almighty God and you can't believe in creation, you cannot be a Christian. Okay, is that plain? Yes. Now, you see, once you take away the story of creation, you take away Almighty God. The attack isn't on creationism, the attack is on God who created it. And when Paul writes in Romans, the thing he makes very clear is he says, look, for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen. He said, look, creation of the world is an important thing to understand. That's how you clearly see. Even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse, because when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful. Now what happens when people deny creation, they deny the God who made them. When they deny the God who made them, they're no longer thankful. Hey, when I walk out and I see the whole of creation, I've traveled the world, I've been to every continent, I've preached in every continent, I'll tell you something, I'm just so grateful that God made such a wonderful world and everything that's in it, aren't you? And when I look at it, I don't believe it happened by chance. I know there was a God who painted every flower, who caused every single thing out of his heart to be made, that was made. And I see the glory of God in it all. And I thank God for it. And if you can't do that, don't call yourself a Christian, you're a heathen. Is that plain? Yes. 